Okay, good morning. Uh, it's my very distinct pleasure to welcome everybody to this, the, the finals session of the 27th uh, National Science Bowl here in Washington today. Uh, my name is Steve Binkley. I'm the acting director of the Office of Science, which is the organization in the Department of Energy that has sponsored this event <clears throat> since its inception uh, in 1991. Um, we're very pleased that everyone is here today. I know the competition has been very fierce over the last couple of days, and we'll conclude in the, uh, you know, the session this morning, and we'll look forward to announcing the winners of this year's competition. Um, by way of background, <clears throat> more than 275,000 students have participated in this, in this uh, competition over the years since the, pro the program started. And before turning the uh, proceedings over to the MC, I want to take this opportunity to really thank the DOE team and all the volunteers that have made this possible. Uh, as you might imagine, <laughs> as you might imagine, there's a tremendous amount of logistics that goes with making something like this succeed and with the different venues here at the 4-H Club and at uh, Trinity University. It's, it's really quite, quite an effort to make this work. Um, so without further ado, I would like to turn the proceedings over to David Zarin, who's going to be the MC for the activities this morning. Uh, welcome, David. Thank you, Steve. And uh, it's nice to be back here at the National Science Bowl. I was just talking to Sean, one of the alumni. He was here years ago with North Hollywood, a school that has won a championship before, and he has come back year after year because whether you've known it or not, if this is your first time or you've been here multiple times, Science Bowl, it's a family. This is a significant event in your life, and you're going to think back to this moment, these times that you've been here, and hopefully you're making friends that will last a lifetime. You know, I always have a great time here because there is no other science competition in this country as great as this one. It's just the best because, you know, win or lose for these five days here in the nation's capital, you get to lead charmed lives. The government pays for everything. Your plane tickets, your housing, your tours, and most deliciously, all the soft serve ice cream you can eat at the Clover Cafe. <laughs> yes, while the bowl is meant to be cerebral and collegial, for many of you, it is mostly a culinary delight. You probably feel like Jacob Lane of Valley Verde Early College High School in El Paso, who says, and I quote, Above all else, I am look, looking forward to being reunited with the 4-H Center's ice cream machine. <laughs> Maybe for some of you, like Sal Maldonini of Doherty Valley High School in San Ramon, who's been coming here for three years, or Coach James Hill of Miraloma High School in Sacramento, a five-time National Science Bowl champion who's been coming here for 18 years. Jim, great to have you back again. You know, maybe for people like Jim and Sal, this is routine. But for many of you, and we have nearly one-fifth of our schools here for the very first time, this is pinch yourself time. You know, for a town that's full of VIPs, you are, for these five days, real celebrities. You're the real marchers for science, taking us forward and making the news. So no matter where you place in this competition, you need to know, and you probably already do, that you are all genuine hometown heroes. Give yourselves a hand. You know, you're all part of a, a great tradition. Like Steve was saying, uh, the Science Bowl, the National Science Bowl, started back in 1999 when General James Watkins was the Energy Secretary. And it's been going strong through eight subsequent secretaries for 26 years now. Back in 1991, before you were born, 
The internet was in its infancy. All of one million people had signed up. Back then, of course, there was no Facebook, no texts, no tweets, no pumpkin spice lattes, no SpongeBob. How did we live? What have you missed over the years? Well, as I came in today, I was on the lookout, as I always am, for the Secret Service, because you just never know who might be dropping by. We never have had a visit from a president, but First Lady Michelle Obama did stop in. And what an impression she made, artfully and flawlessly asking questions of some of the most unnerved players you ever saw. <laughs> Bill Nye's been here, so is Science Friday's Ira Flato, and Nobel laureate Stephen Chu, who also happened to be President Obama's energy secretary. So, welcome to the finale. This is it. Finale of the 26th Annual National Science Bowl. There are 550 of you representing 63 high schools and 48 middle schools. We're especially happy to welcome the five new high schools and the 16 new middle schools to this year's competition. And even though it's dark out there, could all of our new schools stand up so we can recognize you and welcome you to the family. Great to have you here. At the other end of the spectrum, we have two schools here that have been with us for 21 of our 26 years. Mira Loma, national champions, five of the eight, last eight years, and one of our competitors today, Thomas Jefferson Science and Technology School from nearby Alexandria. Most of you flew in, they took the metro. <laughs> Thomas Jefferson has won four championships all in consecutive years, from 2002 to 2005. Among the middle schools, and our competition with middle schools started in 2002, the school that has been here the most times, 11, is happily back with us today. That is Van Antwerp Middle School from Schenectady, New York. Van Antwerp, nice to have you back. How many of you like Trip Harnell of Amarillo High School, he's out there, and Brian Lim of Stuyvesant are making your first trip ever to Washington, D.C.? I can't see your hands if you're raising them. Some of you are obviously here for the very first time. But even if you've been coming here for years like Coach Hill or you're like most of us who have lived here most of our adult lives, Washington never fails to stir the soul. It's a magical and a majestic place for whether it's sitting in this historic hall, this Lisner Hall on the National Historic Registry, or standing next to the King Memorial and feeling the power of Martin Luther King's words, gazing at Thomas Jefferson astride the tidal basin, or surveying Pierre L'Enfant's city from atop the Washington Monument, which you can't presently do because its elevator works about as well as the one in Sheldon and Leonard's apartment building. If you do all those things, or any of those things, it's almost impossible not to tear up and feel proud to be an American. Of course, organizing this souvenir experience takes an immense amount of time and effort and military precision. And the great Science Bowl staff, folks for whom this is more passion than job, there is no one who works harder or sweats the details more, and she doesn't want to be mentioned, but I'm ignoring that, no one works harder than Jan Tyler. <laughs> Jan is a, she's a no-nonsense general with a heart of gold. Jan told me, she said, Dave, you may retire from your other jobs, but you cannot retire from Science Bowl. I said, yes, ma'am. Getting you all here, fed, showered, clothed, and back home, again, is no mean feat. And if anyone can make it look easy, which it assuredly is not, it is Jan and her staff. And make sure, as you're flying home today, you send her a text or a tweet or an email, and you let her and everybody know how much this meant to you. 
You know, one of my favorite parts of the National Science Bowl is reading your bios. It's incredible how wonderful and wonderfully quirky you all are and what lengths you will go to to get me to mention your names at this ceremony. <laughs> Some of you are subtle. Some use flattery. Others come right out and ask for a shout out. Some people write things that are so fantastic that I have to mention them. Like last year, the coach of the Farmingdale High School team in New York, he said, I named my four children player one, player two, captain, and player four. <laughs> and then there is Gabriel Spawn from Stevens High School in Rapid City, South Dakota. Gabe wrote in the third person, as you all did, and most of you hated doing that. Gabe said that for the last two years, he's been recognized at the National Science Bowl finale by the esteemed David Zarin, and that is Gabe's greatest accomplishment to date. <laughs> it's a low bar, Gabe. <laughs> Never been called esteemed before. I kind of like it. Gabe continues, for his senior year, he'd like to go for a three-peat and is willing, get this, to do a dance on stage and or sing the national anthem before the final round. I kind of like to hear that. For those of you that have forgotten or weren't here last year, Gabe answered a question about Jupiter's reflective power with libido instead of albedo. <laughs> Letting you know where Gabe's mind was. <laughs> Speaking of dreams, many of you are dreaming of fame, fortune, and grandeur, no matter who gets hurt. Yes, the mischievous Ben Choi from Lexington High School has apparently been sticking pins in his Bill Nye doll. Ben hopes that if he's successful, there will be no more Bill Nye the science guy, just Ben Choi the science boy. Yeah. I think Ben's gonna be up on stage in a bit. Atharva Pathak of Abraham Lincoln Middle said, I have dreamed all my life of being on the stage at the National Science Bowl final. And when Adam gives me a question, I want to say, Adam, let's make that a true daily double. <laughs> Atharva recently auditioned for Jeopardy, so you know where he's thinking. Anthony Hahn of Gale Ranch Middle School in San Ramon, California, has a nearly foolproof plan for a dreamy career. You see, he tells us that he, he idolizes Elon Musk and says, one day I'm gonna work for him at SpaceX. If that doesn't work out, I'm gonna chat up Richard Branson and go to work at Virgin Galactic. I'm gonna go into space. Should by some chance neither Elon nor Sir Richard give me a contract, I guess I'll just work for NASA. <laughs> but if none of those glamorous careers happens, Anthony says he'll just slum it, yeah, and run the Department of Energy. Hey, Anthony, what are we, chopped liver? No more ice cream for you. We have at least one brother and sister team here today, Kylie and Kaysen Hansen. Even though they're from Twin Falls, Idaho, they are not twins. But we do have at least three sets of identical twins. Joseph and James Camacho from Desert Ridge Middle School in Albuquerque. And their father actually, maybe some of you heard him, he came and gave a talk the other night, and their mother is the coach of the team. Two more identical twins, John and Andrew Winicki of Punahou High School in Honolulu, and Ashwin and Arvin Ramaswamy of Chattahoochee High School in Alpharetta, Georgia, and their mom also is the coach of the team. And let me finish. Lastly, I'm all, among all of you, Eagle Scouts out there, there are many athletes, poets, and yes, the styrofoam violin eaters, not to mention any names, Cole Rowland of Baton Rouge. 
Among all of you, there is Eric Liu. <laughs> he has a reputation, I see. Eric, you see, not only is a great academic and a good soccer player, but he is mostly concerned about affairs of the heart. Yeah. <laughs> Says Eric about himself in the third person. You'll likely to find Eric strumming his ukulele. And although he's just taken up the uke and can play only one song, he defies any girl to hear him play and not fall in love. <laughs> Presumably with him. <laughs> hey, Gabe, we got another libido guy over here. <laughs> All right, it's time to play. For the past 17 years, National Science Ball alumni have been invited to come to the national event and participate as volunteers. They assist in a variety of tasks, serve as competition officials, and more importantly, serve as role models to the students that attend the event. We hope you will consider coming back and being a volunteer once your playing days are over. This year, there are 25 alumni in attendance. Let's give them a hand. Actually, would you all stand up? All 25 alumni, would you stand up? Thank you guys for being here again. One of our alumni will be moderating this morning. Another is a science judge. Two will be rules judges and several others will serve as judges throughout the room. I want to thank you for staying involved in Science Bowl, all of you. Hope you'll be able to come back for many years. Now, on to the competition. We started with 48 middle schools and 63 high schools. We're down to the final two middle schools. They are Odell Middle School from Bellevue, Washington. This is only their second year with us, and they are undefeated in double elimination, and they are playing our returning champion team, Joaquin Miller Middle School. They are from San Jose. They have one loss in double elimination. In the high school competition, we have Ben Choi and Lexington High School from Lexington, Massachusetts. undefeated in double elimination and playing that will be the Thomas Jefferson High School for Science and Technology from nearby Alexandria. They have one loss in double elimination. In the history of Science Bowl, Mira Loma has won five championships, Thomas Jefferson four. Should Jefferson win today, they would tie Mira Loma for most championships ever. Lexington High School is a former champion themselves. Let's wish all the teams the best of luck, and now I'm gonna turn the microphone over to two of our moderators, two returning alumni, Adam Matthews and Philemon McGavin. Gentlemen.